Please welcome Adam. Um, Hi. <laughs> and uh, thank you for being here. And let's see. Thank you for having me. Uh, so hi, guys. Good morning. Uh, my name is Adam. I am here from Erie, Pennsylvania in the USA. Um, unlike some of you, I don't write software. So sorry for anybody. <laughs> For anybody hoping to see me demonstrate cool new software that I've written or cool new shit I've developed, I am not your guy. I am, I am the end user in the room, um, and I think I'm not the only one. So I, I've been uh, recording and performing using basically all Linux and open source tools for the last 10 years or so. Oh, here's my uh, how it started versus how it's going. That's, that's baby me doing my very first performance using open source Linux stuff. And if you can see the deer in the headlights look on my face, that is absolutely real versus how it's going. I'm on my first little European tour right now, doing some gigs, some festivals, this conference. Um, and it's been awesome. It's been fabulous. Thanks to Nils and everybody for having me. Um, playing. I, unfortunately, I need to leave you guys earlier today because I'm playing in Mainz later on tonight. So if you've got any friends in Mainz or near, near to Mainz, tell them to... Uh, Come, come see us tonight at the uh, Walpoden Academy in Mainz, uh, which is going to be real cool. So I'm um, going to do a couple things today. going to kind of just demonstrate like what my process is like as a live performer using Linux and open source tools. And then the other thing that I'm going to demonstrate today is uh, a tool called Sonobus, which is a remote collaboration tool for real-time collaboration over the internet. I got a friend in the US who agreed to wake up extremely early to do uh, some, <laughs> some transatlantic jamming with me for you, and we're going to demonstrate Sonobus. And he's a fellow open source guy and uses a lot of Linux, so uh, we'll talk to him a little bit about kind of some of the tools he's using and stuff like that, and see if we can make some early morning music happen for you. So um, yeah, this is, this is an abbreviated version of my setup that I'm traveling with, but uh, just to show you kind of like what I'm doing on the software side, I'm using Carla, which I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with for basically all of my signal management. I'm using this Behringer interface, which is the uh, 18 in 20 out guy if you've got the, uh, if you have the, the digital add-ons, which I, I do at home and I don't with me. So, um, so, uh, how many of you know Carla? How many of you use Carla? How many of you is this looking extremely familiar to? How many of you have never seen Carla in your life? Okay, uh, that's that's enough to <laughs> that's enough to make it worth it. How many of you wrote Carla? <laughs> okay, he's not here this year. <laughs> um, so anything blue is audio. Um, you know, blue that have things going out the right are outputs. Blue that have things coming in the left are inputs. So right now I've got, uh, as far as physical gear in front of me, I have the Arturia Keystep, which is controlling some software instruments. I have the Arturia Microfreak, which is uh, going into, my own voice coming back to me is going into output, is going into Capture 2. One and two are the only two that I'm using right now. When I have my full setup, it's more of them, but uh, you only get the abbreviated at, uh, in the morning. Um, so basically, Carla's got this patch bay, patch bay view that lets you connect anything into anything out. And then it's also got this rack that you can use VSTs. Um, one of the VSTs that I've got in here, I have uh, the Microfreak is running through this calf vintage delay and this G um, Guitar X reverb. So. <laughs> So it has nice, pretty delays and reverb tails. Uh, and then I'm using, with the key step, I'm using Vital. Um, how many of you know Vital? How many of you have seen Vital? Do any of you write Vital? Matt, Matt's not here either. OK, good. Um, so for those of you who have not seen Vital, Vital is a very nice, very nice uh, synthesizer with a lot of features. It's got multiple oscillators that you can have dif different oscillator types, wavetables, or standard ones, and this is a patch that I wrote with some wavetables 
and some modulation stuff. And it's got lots of, lots of cool cross-modulation options. I don't want to waste a lot of time on that since some of you have seen it. But very good effects routing, different effects that you can put on. And there's this routing matrix so you can put things to different places. And I'm, I'm kind of a Eurorack guy too. It's sitting there in the blue suitcase. So uh, it's, it's, nice, uh, it's nice for me who's kind of used to being able to use things to control other things that you can just drag a parameter and drop it onto another parameter and have an adjustable depth to be able to control that parameter with whatever you're sending into it. Um, so with whatever, whatever musically Tom and I, Tom is my friend in New York State who we're going to call here in a couple minutes. And he's, he assures me he's awake, um, even though it's 6.30 a.m. in the USA. Um, so whatever I'm going to do musically with Tom uh, today will be uh, with these couple of things, with Vital and this running through the couple of effects that we've got. And my other favorite tool, which is sort of sort of an abandoned child of a tool right now is Super Looper. Um, any Super Looper? Oh, I got some about Super Looper. Um, yay, Super Looper? Yay. Any boo Super Loopers? Uh, oh, yeah. Um, I'm also, for years and years, I did not allow myself to become a pedal guy. I'm like, I cannot possibly be a modular guy and a pedal guy, because those are just two black holes of money and gear. Um, but then I got a couple of guitar pedals. Uh, and, and then I used to like to put the two guitar pedals in my bag and the, the cables to connect them with. And then I got a third guitar pedal. And then I was like, you know what would be really nice is if I just had a flat surface to put all these pedals on that I could just put in a bag and carry around with. So anyway, now I'm a pedal board guy. Um, and I have never found a physical looper pedal that costs less than like 400 euros that I like as well as Super Looper. So I've got a shitty little looper pedal on my pedal board, but uh, anytime I use it, it makes me just basically wish I was still using Super Looper. And part of, part of the reason why, and part of the reason that Super Looper makes me really happy is um, most of what I do is really floaty, really ambient stuff. And what I love about Super Looper is you can have you know, a 23 second loop in channel one and an 11 second loop in channel two and have independent feedback percentages. And it's really great for building textures on textures on textures. Um, any, any hardware looper that I've ever tried is more, more on a grid, and I hate grids. <laughs> Sorry to those of you who love grids, but uh, I'm trying to get away from the grid as much as possible. But uh, enough about Super Looper, because Super Looper is uh, it's old, but still really works really well for me. But one of the new things to me and to my process and to the way I've been working with other people, and the, one of the main things I want to talk about today is Sonobus. I don't know if any of you have tried Sonobus, any of you have used Sonobus, anyone? This guy. <laughs> oh, and Tobias. Um, so Sonobus, for those of you who have not seen it, is a tool for real-time collaboration over the internet. And uh, the nice thing, among the nice things about it is it's cross-platform. There's other ones, there's Jam Kazam, there's, uh, there's Jack Trip, which Jack Trip is okay. Uh, and to me, this is like the next better iteration of Jack Trip in a lot of ways. But, uh, you know, I've, I've had a lot of friends who are Mac people or Windows people and, uh, Love Jam Kazam, rave about Jam Kazam. Those of us who are in this room uh, and live in Linux land, uh, that's not an accessible tool for us. So I was really excited when Sonobus came along and it seemed to do all or most of the things that people loved about Jam Kazam, but it's cross-platform and it's, I think it's open source. It's, it's at least mostly open source. And uh, it lets us get into that world of being able to do Real-time performance over the internet, real-time collaboration over the internet. One of my main collaborators, who I did not wake up this morning, uh, lives in Indiana, which is about seven hours' drive from where I live. So in the before times, before COVID, we would, he would drive to my house or I would drive to his house, and we would do that a few times a year. That's harder to do now. Um, so we've been trying to find ways to keep our collaboration going 
and be able to play like we're playing in the same room together rather than just share files back and forth. And Sonobus has been uh, a really good solution for us. So just a little bit about the way this works kind of on the back end. I didn't write it, so I don't have, <laughs> I don't have any like high level, low level, depending from which direction you're looking insight about it. But um, as a user, it's really, really straightforward. You, you launch it and it just shows up as a Jack client, um, just like anything else, basically. So, you know, looking at Carla, looking at my patch bay, um, I think there is probably a way to change what it calls it, but this Elsa Jack dot Jack C dot whatever, that is my two inputs to Sonobus. And this is my two outputs to Sonobus. So going into it, I've got my sexy voice and, uh, and that which I don't want to go away. Sorry, this is scratching. Yeah, so I got my voice going into it, so Tom will be able to hear me talking to him. I got Vital going into it. Yeah, I got Vital going into it. I have the output of my effects chain for this guy going into it. And I have Super Looper going into it. And then the outputs are just going to one and two, which is what you guys are hearing. Um, Going back to Sonobus. So basically, one of one of the one of the kind of caveats about Sonobus, it's sensitive to sample rate. So you and your collaborator, if one of you is running at 48k, you both need to be running at 48k. If one of you is running at 44.1, you both need to be running at 44.1. Um, so that's a, just a thing you kind of need to agree on beforehand. Um, and I've learned this week that it's less sensitive to distance than I would have expected it to be. Because um, I've tested it, I've only tested it with people who live a couple hundred miles or a couple more hundred kilometers from me in the US. Uh, but I did a test getting ready for this with me in Berlin and with Tom in New York uh, and with me on shitty Airbnb Wi-Fi in Berlin and it still worked pretty okay. Oh, the other thing, it definitely works better hardwired than it works over over Wi-Fi, like any other streaming thing, basically. Um, so let's see if we can reach Tom. Tom has already created a session. Basically, one of you creates a session, and it asks you to just name it. You can give it a password. You cannot give it a password. And then whoever else is joining just needs to connect to that session name. So uh, it's very creatively called Holquist Bruce, which is my last name. And his last name, he has not put a password on it. And I will show up as Adam, and let's see if we can connect to the group. Guten Morgen, Tom. Can you hear me? I can indeed. Hi, Tom. Say hello to the people in Cologne, Tom. Hi. Uh, this is my dear friend Tom Bruce uh, in Ithaca, New York, in the USA. Uh, how are you doing this morning, Tom? I'm doing well, thanks. Yeah, and like latency, uh, you know, there's... If you can see it, yeah, you can see it on the screen. It looks good. Um, there's, it'll show you what uh, bit rate you're sending at. I'm sending at 18, 13. It's dipping up and down in the 17s and 18s. Tom is sending to me at 1600 kbps. So latency, sending is 129 milliseconds, receiving is 87. So we're at under 200 milliseconds latency, which is... Uh, you know, if you're a funk band, is maybe not ideal. But uh, if you're making, if you're making floaty ambient music like uh, like Tom and I like to do, um, it's really pretty good. And one of the other nice things that this lets you do, it's here. Yeah, it's here. It has this video link too. This VDO Ninja video link. So we'll see if we can get Tom on the screen. And I am just going to copy that. And if you launch it, it'll launch in whatever is your browser of choice, but I'm gonna be a bad person and use Chrome. You can all boo me now for using Google products. Why are you doing this to me? You know what, this, I'm gonna use Firefox. <laughs> <laughs> We 
waiting for camera to load. Yes, yes, you may allow my camera. There's me. Hi. Not seeing you on my screen. Yeah, I need to push the start button. Oh, and there's there Tom. Are. Say hi to Tom. Tom, uh, I'll turn this around so you can say hello to this lovely room of uh, 40 or so sexy people here in Cologne. Oh, not. <laughs> Tom is no longer. Oh, shit. I bumped my Ethernet. That's what I did. Too sexy for Tom. I broke it. I'm going to disconnect and reconnect. Let me just make sure my my uh, my Ethernet came loose. My Ethernet thing is a little janky. Um, yeah, there you are. Again. My Ethernet fell out. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, you were uh, you were in the process of uh, seeing all the lovely people here in Cologne, and I'm going to reopen you so that we can see each other. Yes, allow. I'm going to remember this decision. And then you'll forget that I've remembered that decision, but that's okay. We you still love each other anyway. Up a little bit. I'm seeing you from the nose down. <laughs> yeah. There we go. There we go. Um, so hi, Tom. Hi. Thank you for waking up early. I know it's uh, you're an early riser as it is. A stream, I motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, I have two instances of it, and that was the problem. Um, so yeah, thank you for waking up early to hang out with us. Um, I was telling them that uh, you were a fellow, fellow uh, Linux fan and open source software aficionado. Um, do you want to talk briefly about some of who you are and what you do and what you like to use and what your process is? Uh, sure. Um, I'm going to back up just so I don't get feedback from that guy. Uh. I, uh, I, I first became a, a, acquainted with Linux when I was uh, working as a uh, programmer at the Cornell Law School. Uh, and it seemed like a very good alternative to me. Uh, I think I installed like the first version on one of my laptops. Uh, and since then, I mean, I've, I've found it to be extraordinarily versatile. Uh, and particularly with the Ubuntu Studio edition. Uh, Which is it what I'm running here, too. Yeah, it really supports a lot of uh, very good stuff, video, audio, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so, I, you know, I like it a lot. Uh, today I'm using a variety of iPad instruments uh, and hardware synths actually. Uh, so I've got like nine iOS instruments <laughs> set up in AUM. Uh, I'm using a, a Arturia Micro Freak. A Vector hey, Synth. me too. Uh, Vector Synth, Innovation Peak, uh, an Organelle, which, which does nice things. For example, this. Yo. Yo. <laughs> Uh, uh, an OP1 uh, and uh, ASM Hydrosynth and a chord radius. Uh, so what's going on for you on the Linux side? How are, you, uh, how are you getting all these guys into the box and talking to each other and talking to us? Uh, I actually have two audio interfaces, one feeding into the other. Uh, the first is a, is, is a Motu uh, Mark V, and the second one is uh, a Motu 16A. And you've been uh, happy with the support from Motu? I know it's, it has had its ups and downs from what I anecdotally hear from yeah, other people. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> it, it 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 sort of comes and goes. Uh, yeah. The problem is uh, actually that their uh, their software interfaces aren't great. Right. Uh, I had a MicroBook too at one point for which the the interface was just impossible. Uh, the Mark V is better, uh, and the 16A is great. Although 
again, uh, that interface can be a little confusing. Yeah. Uh, j just because it's trying to control 16 channels in 32 different ways. <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of combinations to work out. Um, should we try and make some music together? Sure. Why don't we? Uh, you want to you, you, you want to start off? Or uh, why don't you start? You still have that rhythmic idea that I do. we talked about the other day. I do. Okay. So, so I'm gonna let's make some music for maybe uh, ten minutes. Ten minutes, cool. They're checking their watches because they're very punctual <laughs> here in Cologne. Um, so yeah, let's make some music for maybe uh, ten minutes and let's see how it sounds with you there in the People's Republic of Ithaca and uh -huh. uh, me over here. And we'll try and like play in time with each other. And you're at 74 BPM? I am. Okay. Um, All right. Let me switch off my mic. Okay. And, and can you, uh, uh, Tom, you'll, you'll still be able to hear me because I don't want to break things, but can you mute me in the house just so I don't get any weird feedback stuff? And let's... Um, do you have anything interesting going on on your screen that people here might be interested in seeing? Uh, actually, no. <laughs> okay, great. Good talk. Thanks. Um, <laughs> well, I am going to put just my... I'm going to make... No, I'll keep you up. Um, since you look so nice, I'll just put you there. And I'll put this there and that there. And you here, and that there, where I can push the button and use it if I need to. Okay, shall we? Sure, switching off my mic.
Hey. Thanks, guys. Thank you. So, uh, Tom, how, how was your experience of uh, sonically? How did that sound for you where you live? Uh, uh, it sounded great, actually. Uh, yeah. you, you were actually a little loud in my headphones. but Yeah, I was so a little loud in my own headphones. Well, my own <laughs> monitors behind me. So I turned you up. Um, yeah, and that's the, that's the nice thing about Sonobus is, like, you also got... I never use it because I've always got my own inputs routed to my own outputs that I'm already hearing, but you can also monitor what you're sending to Sonobus. I have my monitor turned all the way down because I'm already uh -huh. hearing the things that I need to be hearing. Tom, do you use the monitor on this or no? Uh, I, actually have the, I, I actually have the monitor fed into my, my uh, headphones. So you do use the monitor on Sonobus? Yeah. And that's what you're monitoring on headphones? Yep. Okay. Yeah, and I, I typically don't. Like, I typically only use... Like, I've already got all my inputs awkwardly routed to my headphones <laughs> so uh yeah because like uh you can't see it but i'm showing the people here what my carla session looks like and yeah it's uh particularly because i've got super looper going i got multiple things going into super looper that i'm also making you listen to and you're listening to super looper so mm -hmm. yeah it's sure. a lot of things going a lot of places and a lot of channels that i'm not using at all that are just taking mm -hmm. up screen real estate yeah, it might act, honestly be simpler to uh, to do what you're doing. As as usual, you've got better ideas than me. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm not so sure of that, but okay. Uh, the other thing that Sonobus has that's kind of cool, um, it's I don't love the controls on it, but it's also got this soundboard feature over here where you can drag audio samples that you want to be able to trigger. So like, I, I have some spoken word samples here. You can't find your easy peasy fun things. So I figured out if you keep on taking them, you're going to lose your humanism. And, it's and uh, Twin Peaks scratches is the Twin Peaks scratch. Oh, it, oh, you know what I think it is? Um, I have this problem. I have many problems, but I have this particular problem um, that my, I have a secondary internal hard drive on this and it doesn't auto mount for some reason. So if anybody wants to tell me how to fix that, uh, that would be much appreciated. So I have to remember to open that hard drive because it doesn't mount by itself for some reason. So I think this sound is on that hard drive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there it is. Weird, creepy Twin Peaks scratching sounds. Um, do you use that much, Tom, or not, not particularly? Uh, no, I actually have a, a, a 1010 black box sampler. Oh, okay. Uh, so you've got a I hardware sampler that you're doing. Which I will now demonstrate. Please do. Something about synthesizers. It's I know how to pasteurize synthesizers. <laughs> I know how to pasteurize synthesizers. Um, yeah, it's and uh, it's it's interesting. Like we're we're in a room full of software nerds. Nerds, I say with love. Um, uh, do you want to talk? Is there any particular software on the Linux side that you really like, or is, there, or is a big part of your process, or that you want to uh, give a shout out to, or a, or a plug I'm, to? I'm using I'm using pretty much the same stuff you are. Okay. Uh, I don't use uh, any of the Linux based synthesizers. Okay. Right, regularly. Uh, I do use uh, Carla and now whatever its successor in the new version is uh, for session you know, for management and all of that stuff. Session management and that kind of stuff. Um, but other than that, really not much on the on the Linux hardware side. Okay. Um, I, I I used them for a while. Uh, they're kind of difficult to control. And I'm not I'm not really set up here in a way that I can monitor a screen very well. So uh, I've sort of I, I've sort of fallen away from it. Okay. Uh, does anybody have any questions or anything they want to talk about? Yes. Oh, the question microphone is being passed. Thanks. 
Hi. Hi. Um, was wondering if uh, how many channels would you be able to send simultaneously through Sonobus? You can set up. Let me look at it. Um, I'm set up. Tom is sending me two channels, um, which I apparently have. The Tom, can you send me some signal? Uh, I can. How about some percussion? Okay. Um, yeah, so... And you can also, you can set to send mono, send stereo, send multi-channel. Like, I'm set up right now. Um, is it under connect? No, it's, hang on. You're making me menu dial in real time. Um, input mixer. Yeah, and this also has a click um, that you can use or not use. Uh, and it's down here. Oh, the tempo. metronome? Yeah, the metronome. A tempo level, and you can... This also has onboard recording capabilities, which I didn't bother with today. But, uh, and you can use it to record individual stems of both you and each of your collaborators. And it, it can be more than two collaborators, too. You can have more than... I've not tried it yet with more than two. Tom, have you? Uh, yeah. Uh, Carl Fury and... Uh David Barons and I have done that. Okay. And how does how does that affect does latency scale the more people you have, or does it not really seem to? It doesn't really seem to. Okay. Uh, I suspect a great deal depends on how how far apart uh, the individual collaborators are. So, for yeah. example, if I was to do something with you in Germany and Charles in Indianapolis, I suspect the latency would go up. Yeah, I suspect uh, so. Uh, but yes, you can um group latency match. Hang on, I'm trying I'm trying to find there is an answer to your question. I am trying to find the answer to your question. Yeah, it's um I think it's Tom, I'm gonna disconnect from you for a second and I okay. will connect right back. Um it is Here it is. Um, so your input is Jack. My output is also Jack. Sample rate, audio buffer size, options. I apologize, I can't find it right now, but I feel like, yes, you can send more than one it's like I'm sending him, I'm just sending him stereo right now, but uh, yeah, I apologize that I can't find that right now, but yeah, you. Oh, on the right, if you just move the cursor, there's send stereo. Send stereo. Yeah, there is send multi-channel. Oh, I think you're right. Yeah. Add new input group. Mm. Yeah. So you can, yeah, you can do the send multi-channel. Thank you. Um, yeah. And then you can add, add an input group. You can add more mono channels or more stereo channels right there. Um, thank you for your help. Uh, Hi, so Tom. Subsequent question. Um, yes. I was wondering about synchronization between uh, well, on both sides, and I uh, didn't know that there was a metronome in there. Is the metronome synced? Like, if you change the tempo, is it changed for the, whole, the session on both sides? Yes, it is. All right. Yeah. And is there a MIDI out from Sonobus so you can synchronize with your various uh Is there a software? MIDI out? Sync, there's a sync with file. Synchronize metronome start with file, play, oh, with file playback. And there's, yeah, send metronome to all. So you can, t I think, Tom, are you, you still there? Yep. Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, what happens? We're going to do an experiment. Um, 
what happens if you start a metronome and I start a metronome and we both send to all? Uh, good question. I'm going to start one at 100. See if you're also able to start one. Or is it or is it blocked out for you because I'm running one and sending it to you? Well, let's find out. Awesome. Yeah, there there does not appear to be a MIDI in or out for the metronome. You can sync it to the start of a file. Um, but it doesn't appear that you can MIDI clock it. Would there be a way to maybe send the audio of the metronome out? Uh, so that maybe you could oh, just put, use the yeah, like use it use the audio as a to, almost to like a gate trigger a threshold yeah yes trigger MIDI signal yeah I can I I can I can conceive of a way that you could pretty easily do that and I think does the uh, the MIDI I think you can configure it so that the the click is going out on a separate channel than the master is. So um, yeah, you could route that channel so that you could even route it so that you're not hearing it, but um, you know it's just going into something that's converting a gate to MIDI, basically. Yeah, um, yeah that would be a good that would be a good solution. I agree. Tom, yeah, were you able to? Yes. <laughs> were you able to start a metronome? Yes, I think I have. Uh, I think you're hearing it now. Oh, what's your t What's your tempo at? Change your tempo. Oh, that's sexy. We we could do some we could do some like great Steve Reich phase music, clapping music stuff with this. Can we get can we get somebody else with a metronome and like? Okay, so the answer is yes. You can send it to everybody, but you both you can both be sending one to everybody, and they will fight each other. Um, so you need to like be friends with the person who you're playing with and agree to only one of you start a metronome unless you want to be doing this. They're not. They're not synced. They are not synced. We each have one. Yeah. We each have one that is synced. But like, if I've started mine, which I have, that doesn't prevent Tom from also starting one. Oh. He'll he will hear mine if I if I make him hear mine, and I will hear his if he makes me hear his. But um, yeah, you basically each have one that you can be sending to everybody or sending to only yourself. So the short answer is yes and no. Thank you. <laughs> um, the long answer is also yes and no, but then more words. Uh, I'm going to turn off my click because I'm tired of hearing it. Uh, any other questions? Yes, in the back. Uh, <clears throat> I wanted to ask, are you aware of the software Chamulus? And if so, if uh, how that compares to Sonobus? Terminus? Chamulus. Oh, Jamulus, yes. Uh, yes, I am. I, I found the latency much, much higher with Jamulus. Um, Charles and I, who is one of my main collaborators and also one of Tom's main collaborators, um, Charles and I did some experiments with Jamulus. And uh, Jamulus, we were getting like in the, definitely up in the hundreds of milliseconds. Like it was, it was, it was useful, but it was less useful once we started to get into anything with any sort of rhythmic content. Um, and I may be, I may be mixing and matching Jamulus in my head with. There's another one, another early jam, one. Jam, jam Kazam, you're thinking of? Ninjam, yeah, Ninjam is the other one I'm thinking of, where you basically you set a tempo and it does, it keeps you, it syncs you to a bar but it puts you a bar behind or two bars behind the person that you're playing with. Um, Jamulus, uh, Jamulus I thought was okay, but I, I have found the latency much better. And I think this does some, some bit rate compensation to get the latency down. So when, like I heard it one brief period when Tom and I were playing where he got kind of bit crushy sounding, that's like the, that's the bitrate compensation that it does to keep you in time with each other. Rather, like it'll, you'll kind of bit crush and glitch out for a minute, rather than drift. Um, and Jamulus, in my experience, I've I've had drift more, which if you're just 
doing that is fine, but uh, yeah, if you're doing anything with any sort of rhythmic content, it's really hard to stay locked in in any way. Yeah. I just wanted to say something to latency. I got it down to the 30 milliseconds or so. Oh, so wow. So it was not too bad, but I, may, I guess it depends a lot on the connection. So for me, it was DSL and no Wi-Fi involved and good connection. So and where, also how, how close were you to the person that you were playing with? Like how geographically it, close? It was a bit of a mix because I was playing with somebody from Mannheim, where I lived, to Frankfurt, which is 70 kilometers, and he lived close by. But then we had people from Italy and France and so join oh, because okay. it was a public channel, and that was still in the 30 millisecond range. Or oh, so. that's not that's not bad at all. I may need to revisit that. Oh, more servers were here. Yeah, I think there are fairly few servers in the U.S. So maybe that's a that may be a, that may be a Europe. At Europe thing. Maybe to add to that, um, it's just different uh, like techniques used um, in Sonobus and Jamulus, um, respectively. Um, Sonobus is a peer to peer, so your computer is sort of directly connecting to Tom's computer in this case. Rather than while both being jointly connected to the same server. To a server, uh, which is the case in uh, Jamulus. So, oh, okay. Can have benefits like on either side because uh, Jamulus' goal um, or dedicated goal is to sort of get the bandwidth down. It also does compression with uh, the Opus codec and oh, okay. um, sort of does mixing on the server as well. So you have like, um, if you have like limited bandwidth or something, it's uh, beneficial. But probably oh, okay. it depends on the on the use case. If you have like higher bandwidth, probably Sonobus is yeah. the and if you're option. And if you're trying to make new friends, Jamulus is definitely better. <laughs> There's a lot of like open <laughs> servers, like lots of people are using that. Um, yeah. Same um, for Ninjam, which is... Yeah, uh, like Charles and I, when we were trying, when we were trying, we, um, rather than... Because if you don't want to use the servers, like you can, you can run the hosting software on your own machine and basically be your own server, if I'm understanding right. Uh, and neither of us... Totally, yes. Neither yes. of us wanted to get into that so we just kind of like tried to hide in plain sight on a public server and uh went okay for a while and then you know people came in and started playing drum loops with us which was fun but not terribly productive when we were trying to write music together <laughs> sorry about that oh okay good 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 <laughs> for next time um anyone else I don't know if this okay yeah. so um right in the beginning like a few minutes in like i've heard some uh, crackling i don't know if uh, like you maybe um could uh, better able to tell if it's buffer overruns or is it just the game clipping in in this case or what was I, it i think that's the that's the latency compensation in sonobus so i think that was tom because it, it it sounds a lot like buffer overruns. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's uh, like from an audio standpoint, it sounds just like a buffer overrun. But like that's like that's kind of what what happens when the latency in, or that's what it sounds like to me when the latency in Sonobus is catching up to itself. Basically, it kind of goes crackly, buffer overrun sounding for a couple of seconds, and then you're back. That's interesting. See, I thought it was a buffer overrun, and Son of Us was kind of handling it very gracefully because you were back in sync. By, yeah, like, uh, yeah, and um, also this particular patch in Vital is it's right on the verge of too much. Because <laughs> <laughs> Vital, I love Vital. Um, Vital is also um, it can be a little bit of a resource hog. Like you can get so many oscillators and so many modulation things going that. Like even some of the, I'm not trying to turn this into a uh, pick on Vital at all because I think it's brilliant. But um, you know, even some of the like packaged presets in, what's the one? Oh, it's this one. I love this one. Beautiful, beautiful patch. But if I hold down like more than one key, maybe a third one. Oh, there's buffer overruns. So like, if you want to play a chord. Don't. <laughs> but the nice thing, the other nice thing about Vital, like it is, it's an, is it advanced? Yeah, it's an advanced. Um, it has this oversampling setting that you can go eight, four, two, one. 
I don't hear much difference between to my, you know, blown out, played too many shows ears uh, between two and four, but I definitely hear a difference between two and one. You can take it down to two and one. You can also reduce your number of voices because I think it's, uh, you know, particularly when you got long decay tails, like that's still a voice when it's in decay. Um, so, you know, if you go from two to one and then go from eight voices to maybe uh, four voices, then maybe you can play a chord. Nope. <laughs> and you can see my, my DSP load is like, we'll wait till that stops decaying. Yeah, I'm, I'm hovering around like 18, 19%. And as soon as I hit a note, one note takes us up to 37, two notes still right about there. And then that third one is where, <laughs> it's where we start pushing it. So, um, yeah, and just the fact that I've got all this stuff running and my camera uh, and, you know, looking at Tom in this. Hi, Tom. We haven't been looking at you for a while. <laughs> um, yeah, I have enough else going on that it's, you know, if I weren't, if I weren't doing, you know, the video stuff too and um, running more plugins, you know, it would be, Instead of my baseline hovering at around, you know, 17, 18, 19 percent like we are, it's usually more like 8 or 10. Um, so I can get away with a little bit more. But uh, trying to show you as many toys as I can. So we're pushing it a little bit. <laughs> uh, one more really question about stability, uh, because um, as fellow German citizens may uh, agree to, um, it's it's basically a meme that we have very bad mobile internet um, re reception if you're anywhere I, outside I the city. I have noticed. Yeah. <laughs> I have noticed on the trains. Yeah, it's it's horrid. Um, how gracefully does um, Sonobus handle if you're like disconnecting or say your, I don't know, your ethernet cable fail, fell out? Um, um, how gracefully does it handle um, connecting back in? Is it like sinking back in? Let's try it. Uh, okay. Tom? Uh, you still there? Uh, yeah. Make some noise. Okay. Or just keep talking. I mean, that's that, oh, that's even better. Um, I'm gonna unplug my Ethernet cable now and see see what happens. Oh, we lost him. And then um, let's see. Because I'm not reconnected now. I'm back on now. I'm on the Wi-Fi. And let's see what happens. Tom, are you still there? Can you hear me? Continue making noise. Yeah, it doesn't handle it well. Um, <laughs> so yeah, uh, changing. But I mean, there's plenty of software that I love dearly that doesn't handle this well either, <laughs> like OBS. Um, hi, OBS. Uh, so yeah, not well. But you know, if you're on Wi-Fi. I mean uh, that's a bummer, really. But um, yeah, like if you if you know about that, like if you if you notice, okay, there's a dropout. If you disconnect and reconnect back in, like I I didn't expect it to uh, connect to immediately maintain while in the connection. Session, yeah. But if it like if you're reconnecting, how how well does it work? I mean. I mean I've reconnected again. Tom, are you still there? Yeah. Okay. Uh, um, c can we do another experiment? Sure. Will you make that sound happen again? And I'm going to disconnect, reconnect. So let's, uh, let's plug that back in. So just disconnect, reconnect, connect to group. Pretty quick. So um, yeah, it's uh, yeah, it doesn't handle changing networks like it you will lose it but you can get it back pretty quickly without needing to go through so it basically just reconnects hit connect and uh it'll it'll jump pretty pretty well for you awesome thank you thank you uh anybody else anything else okay there are no questions in the chat channel so no questions awesome well thank you guys so much uh tom 
Thank, thank you. Uh, I'll show you again. The, I'll try not to disconnect my uh, cable this time. I'll show you again <laughs> to the lovely sexy people of Cologne. <laughs> All right, Tom, Adam. I'm gonna I'm th gonna shut down now. Thank you for uh, thank you for waking up early. You've been a lovely sidekick. Uh, <laughs> thank you for doing weird weird sauna bus experiments with me uh, at seven seven fifteen in the morning now. Uh, yes, it yeah, is seven fifteen in the morning. So, uh, love you, my friend. Good to see you. Yep. See you later. Take care. Mm, bye. Um. So that was Tom. Tom's Tom's a lovely guy. And I'm still talking to him, and he can still hear me, I think. But now he can't. Um, thank you, guys. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for listening. Thanks to... Oh, I have... Uh, I, if I go back to my thing, I have a thing where it says, thanks to people. Thanks to Nils. Thanks to everybody with Sonoy. Thanks to everybody at the computer club. Like, this feels very homey to me. Like, it's a place with comfy couches where nerds hang out and talk about stuff. So, um, yeah, I... I I used to have one of these at home, so uh, not a chaos computer club, but a, you know a hacker space that I was involved in. Um, and I'm here. Part of what's financing this trip for me, I got an artist grant this year from uh, an organization called Erie Arts and Culture, which is our local arts organization uh, that's helping me do this little European tour that I'm on. I'm here doing some festivals and some gigs and stuff. Uh, two more gigs to go on this trip, and it's been a wonderful adventure so far. So thanks to them for giving me money to go uh, do cool art stuff with. Um, this is me. I'm Adam Holquist. My project is called One Wayness. Um, I'm at onewayness.com. I got lots of, lots of music on Bandcamp at onewayness.bandcamp.com. If anybody wants to send me an email, uh, you can do that at onewayness at gmail.com. I'm on all the social medias and um, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, all of that stuff. Uh, thank you, guys. Thank you.